Way back in the dark ages of 2010, Christian Rudder, a co-founder of OkCupid, published a blog post titled, Why You Should Never Pay for Online Dating. The post is an indictment of services like Match.com and eHarmony. Reading it kind of feels like looking back on prophecies from Cassandra herself. The man is obviously speaking the truth, but no one was listening. Nowadays, OkCupid is only another brand nestled tightly under the evil ownership of Match Group, the single largest entity in the world of online dating. Home to over 12 apps, at least one of which you've almost certainly used, Match Group is in the business of keeping you miserable and single for as long as possible. Now, Rudder's short blog post is absolutely damning in its criticisms of Match.com and eHarmony. He points out the absolutely perverse profit motives the sites run under. Back then, only paying members could message each other, meaning every user who paid for the service was functioning as a de facto advertising agency for every message sent. Everyone who could send messages was basically asking those who couldn't to sign up so they could message them back. Users were basically paying to do free work for the site. This isn't how the paid functions of modern dating apps work, though. At least not the ones I've used, and I've used several, including Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble. Bumble, by the way, is one of the few apps not owned by Match Group, though they're certainly not less evil because of it. Rudder also notes that at the time, you were more likely to get married if you weren't using Match.com or eHarmony. And I wouldn't be surprised if those stats still hold true, as the majority of singles aren't actually on these dating apps. Something Rudder did capture perfectly is the Doom Loop, which unfortunately has nothing to do with the game. The Doom Loop is where math and desperation both swipe right on each other for some reason. According to Rudder, and again, this number is from 2010, though it does come directly from OkCupid's okay numbers, men can expect a response from a real woman approximately 30% of the time. This does not account for bots or scammers. However, the more messages a man sends, the less likely he is to get a response. This is very easy to understand, especially if you've been on the market lately and you've seen how painfully vapid so many profiles are. I mean, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? This is the doom loop in action. I don't care, so my specific targeted responses become pellets of birdshot, just hoping to hit something, but then not really caring if I do. So my response rates plummet, and every girl's inbox is flooded with dudes saying nothing more than hi with an emoji. And remember, this is the norm. This is as good as it gets. This doesn't even account for the ever-expanding problem of bots and scammers. Some of you probably laughed at Rudder's number mentioned above. A response rate of 30% is actually extremely high these days, and not just because of the doom loop. If a certain percent of every match is a bunch of bots and those don't respond, or else they respond in a way that makes it clear they're bots, like they immediately send you their Snapchat, that response rate will immediately plummet. These bots aren't terribly sophisticated. In fact, you can usually identify them before you swipe. What's worse, somehow, is that sites like Ashley Madison have been caught paying people to fake profiles on the site. They paid fake people while charging the real ones. By the way, the writers of those fake profiles could make up to $25,000 per year. Not bad work if you can get it. Also, if you're curious for more numbers, scammers and fake profiles make between 50 cents and $5 per message. All of this came to light after Ashley Madison was hacked way back in 2015. It should also tell you how much money is in the market if sites are willing to spend thousands of dollars just to fudge their numbers. But I guess it's not really fudging. It's more like outright lying. In hookup-oriented and so-called adult dating websites, real women can make up less than 2% of total users. This is according to the Washington Post. There's actually a kind of funny story about one Ashley Madison employee who sued the company because she developed carpal tunnel syndrome from writing too many fake profiles. Whew. Poor thing. Most of these jobs are, unsurprisingly, in Eastern Europe. Or now. Do you really think the savvy-minded businessmen behind Match Group are so honest as to avoid these activities themselves? Scammers aren't anything new, though. So I'm just going to repeat that the dating apps themselves are hiring scammers to puff up their numbers. 
it's not just that they know about this, it's that they're paying to make sure it keeps happening. And believe it or not, the black pill is still coming. Hey friend, listen up. I know the world is scary right now, but it's gonna get way worse. One of two things is about to happen. I don't mean in the next 10 years, I mean the next year or even the coming months. These apps are either going to become the greatest scam market in history or else collapse entirely. Chat GPT! That's it, you can fill in the blanks. In case you didn't know, OpenAI owns ChatGPT, and they recently removed their not-for-profit status. Microsoft just dumped $1 billion into OpenAI with the hope of integrating their AIs into future products, meaning anyone with Windows will have the AI necessary to communicate with any lonely guy on Tinder. Like I said, this will either create a nightmare world, like her, which, no, I've never seen, and I'm not gonna watch Joe Quinn Phoenix fuck a phone. But this world will have Scarlett Johansson's sultry voice asking you for a new passport to America every six weeks. Everything on these profiles could theoretically be AI-generated. Voice memos, pictures, even videos. And, as you've probably already figured out, this is actually already possible. <laughs> meaning there is zero reason to trust anything you see on any of these apps. This leads us nicely into option two, the total collapse of these markets. We'll have to go back to relying on networking and matchmakers or something. I don't know, I'm a goddamn millennial, hence the name. I don't know how old people used to meet each other. I actually think this is the way the entire internet will be going soon. Nothing on it will be real. And the only thing we can trust is the world offline. So, I guess what I'm saying is, reject modernity, return to monkey. In any case, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you enjoyed it, and remember to take care of yourself.